All right, let's talk about decentralized finance or DeFi for short. This is a big trend in blockchain technology that you should know about, all right? So you can see right here, there's a huge amount of money that's locked up in DeFi projects like Compound Finance, which I'm gonna talk about later in this video. And that trend is moving upward and upward every month, okay? So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory from DAP University. On this channel, I teach you how to build blockchain technology, but you don't have to be a developer in order to watch this video. If you're just interested in blockchain, interested in you know uh, decentralized finance, this video is for you. So uh, click the subscribe button, click the like button down below. That really helps these videos get found, all right? So what is compound finance? What is decentralized finance? What is all this stuff, all right? So in this video, I'm gonna explain you know, what DeFi is. Uh, I'll give you some examples of some cool DeFi projects. I'll even demo on how to use one. And then I'm gonna give you some kind of you know words of warning, some caution uh, when you're kind of getting into this space, what you should watch out for and you know what you should be cautious about, okay? So decentralized finance is basically just taking existing financial products and porting them over to the blockchain. Things like loans, savings. I'll give you a full list here in a minute, but why would you want to do this? All right. So the blockchain is really good at representing store value, uh, transferring currency, assets, and things like that, right? We've already seen this with cryptocurrency, uh, people doing price speculation and payment and store value uh, with Bitcoin, Ethereum, other cryptocurrencies, right? It's building more sophisticated financial systems actually on top of the blockchain to work with that store of value, work with that currency, work with those payment systems, okay? So what's really cool is, you know, blockchains that support smart contracts like Ethereum allow you to do this. You can basically write programs that interact with money and you know, represent things like loans, collateralized debt, and things like that, all right? So it's pretty cool, pretty sophisticated, pretty advanced, and I think it's a huge trend that uh, we're gonna see some cool adoption of blockchain technology in this field. So here's a cool website you should know about. This is DeFi Pulse, which tracks a list of different decentralized financial products, okay? So we can see that the entire value of US dollar locked up into all these projects is $517 million. So you can see there's a lot of adoption already in this ecosystem, and this is already a pretty big deal, right? You can see uh, some names that you might have heard of before on this list, like Maker, Compound, uh, Uniswap, Lightning Network, and you can see the list of the blockchains that these are all a part of, okay? So it's no secret that that uh, decentralized finance is heavily built on the Ethereum platform, right? Because it's a very sophisticated smart contract platform. There's a lot of developer usage here already. It's an ecosystem that's very ripe for innovation in this territory, okay? And you can see a uh, Bitcoin here, like Lightning Network, is another example of a blockchain that's supporting DeFi, okay? So you can see that these uh, projects are categorized, like lending and derivatives. So what are the different financial products that uh, you know we can port over the blockchain to create decentralized finance? Well, payments, stable coins, uh, trading, loans, derivatives, and fundraising, all right? So you'll see different examples of that listed on this page. So how do these apps work? Well, I talked about Ethereum being a smart contract platform, right? So essentially the smart contracts uh, become the intermediaries here on the blockchain instead of uh, you know other intermediaries that you might see in traditional financial systems like banks, for example. So let's just take an example use case. Let's talk about a loan, all right? So in decentralized finance, uh, the smart contract essentially is the intermediary here. Developers write a contract that handles loans, all right? And there's some interaction on both sides, where the assets come from, and then how people borrow this money, okay? So for example, you know, in a tra traditional financial system, if you're going to get a loan from a bank, if it's not a secured loan, essentially they need to check your credit score. They want to say, uh, you know, are you fit to lend money to? And then they'll give you the money and you have to pay it back over time at a certain amount of interest, right? So, uh, like, let's look at some of these DeFi projects like, you know, Maker or Compound, for example. Um, these are collateralized loans, um, which basically means that you have to give money in order to borrow money back. And a lot of time the collateral position is higher uh, than the amount of money that you're borrowing, right? So it doesn't work quite the same as like you wanna borrow money for a house and they just trust you to pay it back over time. We're not quite there with blockchain technology yet, although we could build something like that over time where we actually represent a credit score, uh, a lending history, and, and you know basically your reputation on the blockchain. Uh, but at this point, you know we're working with something like a collateralized loan. So if this has a lot of use cases for traders, for example. Like if you want to go borrow money to trade and make a profit and then pay it back. So there are two different opportunities here, one on the borrowing side and one on the lending side. So I'm going to demo that here in a minute. I'll actually walk you through how to use something like Compound Finance, uh, and then I'll introduce you to some other uh, cool DeFi projects, right? So 
I highly recommend checking out DeFi Pulse to you know kind of see what's going on in the DeFi space. You can look at the uh, total value locked in uh, with US dollar and also kind of explore some new projects, right? Another really great website is Loan Scan, right? So you can see uh, several different products and kind of compare interest rates. So part of the cool thing about decentralized finance is it allows you to earn competitive interest rates. So you can lock one of these projects and earn interest that might be harder for you to earn somewhere else. And that's one reason that I think that uh, DeFi could see a lot of adoption among you know, people who aren't using the blockchain yet, right? So let's think about the early blockchain adoption and what drove it. So in my opinion, you know, uh, one of the reasons people started using blockchain at all was just to speculate on cryptocurrency prices and have a store of value. And they flocked to blockchain because they were seeing opportunities they couldn't get somewhere else, right? The volatility of prices like Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, you know, was taking off like a rocket and they were seeing those opportunities anywhere else, right? So, uh, as much as people want to criticize the blockchain for not being user friendly, you know, having really terrible user experience and, you know, bad tools and being kind of sketchy in the early days, uh, it didn't matter because there was such tremendous upside that people were willing to jump through all those hurdles and, you know, do what it took to get their returns, cash out, all that kind of stuff. It's sort of like, you know, jump in and then just deal with the problems later because the, the upside's so big. So I could see a similar kind of thing happening with decentralized finance. Let's say, that you have really competitive interest rates for just locking money in here. What if you could basically just put money into a smart contract that would earn you 15, 20% interest? Uh, it's going to be really hard for you to find a good place to do that otherwise. Right? If, if that became a predictable historical uh, model over time, and we could you know, count into these protocols to have those kinds of yields, that could be a real game changer for you know, finance, right? So you can look at uh, the different uh, protocols here and see the different uh, interest rates that they're earning right now. So you can see anywhere for a range from like, you know, half a percent interest up to like, you know, somewhere in about 10% interest. And this, these figures change over time, but this gives you an idea of, you know, what you can do and where you can earn money. And the really cool thing is this allows you to get returns in the cryptocurrency markets without having to speculate on cryptocurrency prices, right? So if you're a trader and you're in the middle of a bear market and you're having a hard time getting returns or something like that or whatever, let's just say for some reason you don't want to be trading cryptocurrency, but you want to hold it, you can lock it into these contracts and actually earn returns that way without having to speculate on price, okay? And another big reason I think decentralized finance can be a big game changer for people over the long term is that it removes a lot of the barriers of entry that other financial systems have in place. You don't need to provide an identity. Uh, you don't have to have a squeaky clean background as far as your you know, financial history goes. Uh, it doesn't matter what country you live in. And also, you don't even have to open a bank account, right? So there might be a lot of things that are prohibiting people from like getting loans or earning interest uh, in ways that decentralized finance might be able to solve. And I think that's a really cool uh, positive to the technology. And another big benefit is to be able to just kind of park your money somewhere, set it, forget it, and keep earning money, right? Especially as the UX gets better, as wallets get better, uh, we might be able to see this integration on just, you know, your mobile phone. You could just sort of pick it up, move some money in there, and start earning interest without having to jump through all these hoops to do it somewhere else, okay? All right, so now I want to show you, you know, how to actually use a decentralized finance product, okay? So Compound Finance is what I'm going to show you today. And I want to be you know, super clear, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to go lock money into compound finance. Just watch me do it. You know, Use this at your own risk. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to go to compound.finance, which is the main website for this. I'm going to go ahead and go to the app. All right. So in order to do this, you need some cryptocurrency. I'm going to use uh, Ethereum cryptocurrency, and you need a wallet. So uh, I'm using MetaMask, which is already you know, installed here in my Google Chrome window. And you know, just got a few dollars in here. Uh, so I'm going to show you how it works. I've actually supplied money to this already. So you can see I'm already using Compound. Uh, I've, I've added $15, and I can borrow $11 if I want to. So I, I've lent more money than I can borrow. And that's what I was talking about earlier about being uh, collateralized. You have to have more money in the contract than you can borrow. Okay. All right. So I've already used this app and I've had some ether locked in here for, you know, maybe a month or two. And you can see that it's been earning an interest rate. Now it's not a great interest rate right now. It's only about 0.4% uh, interest, but other assets are earning a lot higher interest like DAI, for example. So DAI is a stable currency on Ethereum. Um, so basically you could take just US, it's, it's pegged to US dollars. So you could take US dollars by DAI, put it in compound finance and earn 8.2% interest, right? Uh, and also if you're going to borrow, you would borrow at a 13% interest rate. So that's how it works on the other side of things. Okay, you can see other assets like uh, August, USD coin, all right? All right, so I've already locked up some Ether in here, but now I can use that to borrow DAI, all right? So if I'll just go uh, click DAI, and I have to enable it, all right? So I sign a transaction with MetaMask, all right? 
pay a small fee to do this. And now it's going to allow me to uh, borrow DAI on the platform after locking up the Ether. All right, now that's finished, I just click the borrow button. All right, and let's just say safe max. Uh, because I've supplied, you know, $15 worth of uh, Ether, I can uh, basically borrow this amount. All right, so I click borrow, and that would uh, create the loan. And whenever I've done, I would basically supply it back, make the payment, and when I want to withdraw my initial asset, I would go back to Ether, click withdraw, I say the max, and click finalize, sign the transaction with MetaMask, and there you go. That's how easy it is to you know supply funds to this, earn interest, and then just withdraw whenever you're done. All right. And the thing I really like about Compound Finance is that it looks very user friendly. Okay, you, it's pretty self explanatory. When you go here, you can just see um, that you know here's the assets, here's what the interest rate is, here's what you earn, put your money in it, take it out, get a loan, pay it back. Looks great, all right? And this is the kinds of things we need as more people are getting into the space. Uh, they're, you know, just kind of idiot proof, right? Somebody can get in here and figure out how to use it without a video at the top that shows them exactly what to do or having their friend go over their shoulder, right? All right, I'll quickly give you some other uh, DeFi projects you can check out, right? Maker is definitely the most popular one. This is for like uh, collateralized loans as well. Compound Finance, which I just demoed. Uh, let's see here. There's decentralized exchanges like Uniswap. Uh, Bancor, which is really great for providing instant liquidity. Basically, Bancor allows you to go in and just redeem uh, your cryptocurrency for a set price that having to wait for an order to be filled, right? So there's lots of other ones you can check out here on this list. Um, another cool kind of innovation in decentralized finance, I think, are token sets. So these are built-in asset management strategies, okay? So basically, this automatically balances different cryptocurrencies without having you have to really think about it, right? They call it smart rebalancing, all right? So check out this whole list of different DeFi projects on DeFi Pulse. This is a really good website. You can just bookmark this on your homepage if you're really curious about watching the space and kind of watch it over time. And I even have my own, uh, you know, ideas for DeFi projects and where I can see this space going. You know, I talked about, you know, credit scores being a thing on the blockchain eventually having some sort of reputation. Uh, but something I've also been thinking about, um, and this is, you know, a free business idea. If anyone out there is watching and wants to run with this, feel free. Um, basically, a way to do escrow that, it has incentives, right? So I know people who bill against escrow accounts like as freelancers or something like that. So basically what happens is a business locks up money uh, for a certain amount of time and the uh, you know freelancer, the employer or whatever is able to just submit invoices and like draw from the escrow account. So money gets locked up for a fixed amount of time. Uh, the person who's working knows the money's there and they can just draw from it. So I could see this being automated with smart contracts, but also providing incentive for the person who's you know paying at, into escrow. Uh, so here's why, right? If you're just locking money into escrow for a certain amount of time, it's not doing anything. It's just, you know, you're paying for something else that you're going to get a return on later, hopefully, like that's why you do anything in business. But if the money's just parked there, it could potentially be earning more interest, right? And I could see that being a thing, right? Where you could basically just park money in escrow and then the money... Uh, earns interest that you get paid back over time while it's in escrow, and then the person just bills and, and draws from that over time, right? I can see a way even pool funds like this from other people to where you can earn interest as escrow payments. Um, really cool idea. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if anybody's already doing this. If there are, just let me know down in the comment section below. And lastly, I just want to give you a few words of caution uh, when you're using the DeFi ecosystem. This is a very early time. This is a very experimental time, so don't put any money in that you can't afford to lose, right? And I'm going to bring up uh, an article here from Amin, who's the CEO of Spank Chain. Uh, and he talks about this. You know, I, you should check out this article. He talks about having a half million dollars uh, that he has to basically oversee as a CEO of his company. And he holds it in DAI, right? So this is a stable currency on Ethereum. So this is their reserves. And he was like, hey, should I be putting this in something like uh, compound finance, right? So he talks about points of failure. He talks about, you know, what the vulnerabilities could be, that there are some custodial aspects of these protocols. And that you should definitely exercise caution. So I highly recommend checking out this article um, if you haven't already. Uh, if you're really serious about getting into DeFi and you want to store like really large sums of money, here's pretty good insight on what you should think about before doing that. All right. As always, you know, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you uh, what you should do with your money. You should do your own research. And this is just my opinion. All right. So I hope you all like this video. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the like button down below. And if you want to learn how to build blockchain technology, you should join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.